Welcome to the NWAETC Project ECHO. I'm Kent Unruh, and I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Brian Wood, our medical director, to introduce our guest. Well, I'd like to extend a big thank you to Dr. Virginia Brody for doing the talk today. Dr. Brody is Chief of Medicine here at Harborview and a professor in the Division of Hematology and Oncology. And Dr. Brody is going to talk today about HIV and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I will turn it over to her. All right, and thank you very much for inviting me to come today. And when um, we first learned about HIV, it was, it was noted that certain malignancies are much, much more common in people who are living with HIV. And these include Kaposi's sarcoma, uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, primary central nervous system lymphoma, and invasive cervical cancer. Uh, Kaposi's sarcoma remains the most common malignancy worldwide in people living with HIV, but in the United States, there are now more cases of non-Hodgkin lymphoma than Kaposi's sarcoma. Primary central nervous system lymphoma is a disease that we see much, much, much less frequently these days as we have effective antiretroviral therapy and many patients have uh, access to antiretroviral therapy. So this is an uncommon disorder. One of the things I'd like to accomplish today is to encourage you to do standard cancer screening in your patients who are living with HIV. And the reason is that many other non-AIDS defining malignancies are much more common in people living with HIV. And these include anal cancer, which is up uh, you know, over a hundredfold more common in people living with HIV than in uh, age matched HIV negative people, particularly in the population of men who have sex with men. Uh, Hodgkin lymphoma is, is up about uh, 20 fold hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, you have to remain alert uh, to this, and lung cancer, the most common cancer in, in the U.S. Uh, in all patients, is up about um, twofold in people living with HIV. Um, uh, but many other common cancers, breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, are not increased in, in uh, frequency in HIV positive people. And this is a uh, bar graph that shows the number of cases of Kaposi sarcoma uh, versus the, the year. And you can see that it was that Kaposi, sar Kaposi sarcoma was very, very common in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. And then with the onset of effective antiretroviral therapy became uh, much less common. And here is the graph for diffuse large B cell lymphoma, the most common kind of lymphoma we see in people living with HIV. And uh, this, uh, the, the uh, frequency of this is, uh, has not declined the way Kaposi's sarcoma has. It's pretty much stable, actually. Here is a graph of Burkitt lymphoma, a very aggressive, fast-growing type of lymphoma. This is actually increasing in frequency uh, in the era of effective antiretroviral therapy. And so in the U.S., approximately 6% of all patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and approximately a quarter of patients with Burkitt lymphoma are HIV positive. And so we tell the oncologists if they see somebody newly diagnosed with Burkitt lymphoma or diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, it's entirely appropriate to, uh, to do an, an HIV test. And so in the antiretroviral therapy era, the non-AIDS-defining uh, malignancies that we just talked about are about half of the cancers we see in people who are living with HIV. And so it's very important uh, since um, uh, many people with HIV will live uh, into their 60s, 70s, and beyond that we, that we offer age-appropriate cancer screening to detect uh, colon cancer, breast cancer, other types of, of cancer. And also, since uh, about 20% of HIV-positive people don't know that they're HIV positive, we do recommend uh, uh, HIV testing in people who present with anal cancer, any type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, Hodgkin lymphoma, or uh, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP. The aggressive lymphomas are about 50 to 100 fold more common in people living with HIV. And as we mentioned, there's some increase in uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, primary central nervous system lymphoma, is we see very, very rarely these days. It's most common in people who have a CD4 count of less than 50, and often actually their CD4 count is uh, you know, 8, 10, 12. They are, they are very immuno, uh, immuno in, uh, compromised. And so a practical approach, uh, the most common kind is diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Second would be Burkitt lymphoma. 
and the others are much rarer today. The primary central nervous system lymphoma, plasmablastic lymphoma, which I'll sh of which I'll show you a picture, and primary effusion lymphoma. This is lymphoma occurring in ascites or pleural effusions or uh, pericardial effusions. Things that should make you concerned about um, uh, HIV-associated non-Hodgkin lymphoma would be the B symptoms, and these would be uh, drenching night sweats such that you have to change your pillowcase or your bed sheets, uh, weight loss, 10% of your body weight in six months without trying, uh, or uh, uh, fevers. Uh, they can often be extranodal. People can present with uh, abnormalities in their liver, gastric lymphoma, rectal lesions, uh, kidney involvement, subcutaneous nodules, they are very aggressive, and we stage them with CAT scanning and uh, uh, bone marrow biopsies and excisional biopsy of the primary lesion. And this is an example of one of Dr. Spock's patient, uh, patients for whom I currently care. And uh, he had developed an obvious uh, uh, mass in his uh, left submandibular area over a period of six weeks. This, this very large lesion had grown over six weeks and on biopsy turned out to be a Burkitt lymphoma. I'm happy to say that he's now five years out for treatment and appears to be uh, permanently cured. I, I'd like to mention, and I know Dr. Harrington has already discussed this, that we are a core site for the AIDS Malignancy Consortium clinical trials, and we have an open clinical trial right now, AMC 075, which is our EPOC, a uh, frontline chemotherapy regimen, with or for out, without varinostat, a histone deacetylase inhibitor for HIV people with newly diagnosed diffuse large B cell lymphoma and uh, a CD4 count uh, of 50 or above. And these are the individuals below uh, who are involved at the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance here at Harborview or at Virginia Mason Medical Center if you're interested in referring a patient for the clinical trial. There have been multiple studies of either CHOP or EPOC with or without rituximab in HIV positive people uh, with uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. And the, 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 what we use these days is uh, EPOC, it's five different drugs given once every three weeks for uh, six cycles uh, with uh, rituximab. And the overall survival is between uh, 60 and 70 percent at five years. So this is a very, very treatable malignancy and a highly curable malignancy. So all patients with HIV-associated diffuse large B-cell lymphoma or Burkitt lymphoma should be uh, fully staged and aggressively treated with a goal of permanent cure. And we can achieve this for most patients. However, it varies a lot depending on what your uh, CD4 count is at the onset. And so here's uh, one study in which you can see that the outcome for uh, people who had a CD4 count of greater than 100 per microliter at the onset was superb, and the outcome for people with a, a lower CD4 count was uh, we have a lot of room for improvement. And so patients, as in most things, with a better CD4 count uh, uh, have a better outcome. And it's imperative that all of these patients be on uh, antiretroviral therapy concomitant with their, um, with their chemotherapy. And so we uh, treat people with this dose-adjusted R-EPOC regimen, generally. Uh, it, uh, we sometimes, uh, we consider not using uh, rituximab if their CD4 count is very low because of data showing that they would have, in, they have increased uh, infectious deaths due to infection uh, with a low CD4 count and use of rituximab. They should all be on antiretroviral therapy. Very few are on zidovudine these days. And we need aggressive supportive care with uh, growth factors and prophylaxis, prophylaxis against uh, common uh, infections. And whenever we um, uh, treat somebody with lymphoma, we always have to weigh the, the risks and the benefits of, uh, of lymphoma treatment versus the risk of, of uh, causing a serious infection. But we have safely treated people with CD4 counts as low as zero with um, uh, multi-drug systemic chemotherapy uh, with, with cure. And so as antiretroviral therapy improves, the prognosis is defined much more by the lymphoma than by the underlying um, HIV. I'd like to just briefly comment on uh, Burkitt lymphoma. 
It's about a third as common as diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. As you saw from the photograph, it tends to present with rapidly growing masses, either in the, generally in the lymph nodes, but it can be in the, in the stomach, it can be acute subcutaneous nodules, many different places. Occurs at a higher CD4 count generally than people with a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, very aggressive, and as I said, often involves the extranodal sites. Uh, a study that was recently published in the New England Journal from the National Cancer Institute, they treated um, a number of people with, both were HIV positive and HIV negative people with this dose adjusted EPOC regimen with intrathecal prophylaxis, and they had an absolutely superb outcome. All of these patients were in complete response at four to five years. This was at the National Cancer Institute, and they had uh, very, very good outcomes, but I think it, even with Burkitt lymphoma, very aggressive lymphoma, we can, we can strive for cure in these patients. I want to show you a picture of plasmablastic lymphoma. This is rare, uh, but it presents as a mass lesion, often in the gums, but it can be elsewhere. And I've seen it in the skin and other places. Uh, it's often diagnosed by dentists, and we don't do as well with, for these patients. The median survival is about uh, 11 months with a five-year survival of about 25 percent, most, de most deaths due to lymphoma. And this is why I always look in the mouths of my patients with uh, 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 HIV. This is a patient who came in and his dentist found this lesion. And he has a, a big gum mass that you can see there on the left. And this is a classic presentation for uh, plasmablastic lymphoma of the oral cavity. So in your, your patients living with HIV, always keep in mind if they have a mass in their gums that lymphoma is in the differential diagnosis and it's important to get a good um, uh, incisional biopsy to, to make this diagnosis. So in summary, uh, people living with HIV have a very long expected survival on antiretroviral therapy and as uh, the population ages, about half the cancers are non-AIDS defining cancers, so think about age doing age appropriate cancer screening. Um, as antiretroviral therapy improves, the prognosis is defined more by tumor related features and less by HIV. And it's very important to work in partnership with the um, uh, HIV primary care physician uh, because it's very, very important for all of these patients with cancer to be on uh, antiretroviral therapy for best outcome.